Hello, my name is Ronald Zernecki. I am the owner of Video to Life Productions, and I'd like to show you my idea for a light box that would cost you under $100 to build. These are great light boxes for something like green screen or taking to a location, uh, which is very easy to do because of the fact that when they close down, they can get very narrow. But what's nice about these light boxes is that they come with uh, U clamps. These uh, U clamps will allow it to be suspended from a C stand and you can actually hang it and, and shine it down. Now, the tutorial you're about to see is rather long, it's very detailed. But when you get done, you're going to feel confident that you could build one of these light boxes. So please skip around the tutorial, but when you get done, I'm sure you'll find it very useful. And I thank you very much for watching my tutorial at Video to Light Productions. This is the board you're going to be using. You want to grab the edge that's the smoothest, so that'll be the brand new edge. You're going to measure out 39 inches. Our finished product is going to be 40 inches by 20 inches, allowing a half inch for each side. This measurement is going to be 19 inches, allowing a half inch for each side, for a total width of 20 inches. Here's where a sharp knife comes in handy because a dull blade will end up tearing the foam. Make sure your blade goes all the way down to the bottom. That's why it's good to have a nice piece of plywood on the other side so you can press hard. Now we're going to score just a foil good to try to keep as much of this foil on the foam as possible. Good heat resistance. So there, now you have your first piece, the base. So now it's time to make the socket panel. The socket panel will be 19 inches by 39, just like the base. You could flip this so that the reflector side is showing out, or the white. The socket hose will be measured out in increments of 5 high and 3 across. So that'll be 7 and 4 fifths and 4 and 3 quarters. That's the center mark. This will be the center of the square. And it doesn't have to be a exact when you when you cut it out. It could be off a little bit. Now here I'm going to rough out the square, and then as I'm going along, I just kind of even it off and make it a little bit bigger if I needed to. Here I'm enlarging it a little bit. Until I get them approximately the way I want them. And there I go. And now it's time for the sides. You'll be measuring this out 39 inches like before. The width is 7 inches. The next piece will be the top and bottom, which will be 7.5 inches they have to overlap the sides by a half inch. That's side one. And now for the other side. Same again, seven inches for the width. And 39 inches for the length.
and cut to foil. There, that's two sides. And now for the top and the bottom. You'll be measuring this one at seven and a half inches because this top piece has to overhang the sides by a half inch. You'll be going 20 inches across. So seven and a half by 20 inches. I'm just making a straight cut 40 inches and then I'm going to cut it in half later. Notice the quick move with the finger. You always want to be careful when you're working fast. And then get the foil on the bottom. That's your top and your bottom. Now we just need to cut that in half. 20 inches. And presto. That's your top and your bottom. Okay, this is how it all goes together. A side at um, 39 inches. And the top set 19 inches. We need to take off some of this foil, so we're going to take off a half inch because the side is a half inch thick. Using a ruler as a guide, keep a straight edge, and with a sharp knife, we should be able to make one nice long single cut. Because with a single cut, you can just rip it right off. And now the same for the other side, half inch, and with the ruler, we're just going to score the foil. Notice how we're using the crooked end keeping the straight edge for the overhang. Now to keep the corners secure and firm we're going to use drywall corners. These go on the corners of two pieces of drywall when you're framing up a house. Here I'm using my great grandfather's tin snips to cut this. So if you remember our measurements this is 40 inches because we're going to have the um, top and bottom. The other measurement is 20 inches. 19 plus 2 half inches. Okay, now we have all of our pieces for one side. Rails, the top, and the side. However, we forgot to strip the edges, which are also going to touch the sides. There. Now everything's ready for the gluing. The type of adhesive we're going to use is Loctite. Make sure you get the Loctite that's for foam. It sells for about $3.59 a tube, so don't be sparse on it. Use a lot. Our side rail should measure 40 inches because it's going to take up a half inch for each of the uh, top and the bottoms. Notice I'm wearing rubber gloves. Loctite is easy on the hands, but it does come off with acetone, so do wear gloves. You're going to be pressing on the foam quite a bit, so you might get some of this adhesive on your hand. Loctite is pretty adhesive, so you really don't need to put any clamps on it. Just put pressure, push on it so it tacks up, and it should stay. Now you're going to glue the top, or the bottom, whichever one you want to call it. The side rail will measure 20 inches. After we get the sides to stick together, we can go back later and squeeze some more adhesive and cracks to fill them up. After you get the sides to stick down, you can go back later and really put some more Loctite on and press it in like this. Fill up those holes and you can even go back after it dries and put some more on. Here we forgot to measure seven and a half inches for the corner piece. In cutting the uh, 
side piece. It only needs to be seven inches. We don't need to cover the other half inch that's sticking up because it'll jut out a little bit. Remember to let it squish out right through the holes. Let the other two sides dry for a day or so so that they're good and hard before you begin on the next two sides. Again, strip off the foil so that you're gluing just to foam. And use the ruler as a guide to make a nice straight cut. The straighter the line, the more easier it peels off. Notice for the bottom or top panel, I've gotten all three sides stripped. Now the rail is going to be 40 inches long. Here I'm using my great grandfather's tin snips again. Many years I had them. And the corners are going to be 7 inches. Here I'm making a little guide cut without penciling it in. When you're putting on the adhesive, make sure you fill in any gaps in the foam that you might have uh, tore out. Just fill it all up with adhesive. All you need to do is get it to stick. It'll dry overnight rock hard. You're going to go through at least two tubes, maybe two and a half if you really fill in the gaps, but this will really hold up. Loctite is uh, really durable and will last for many years. And now to glue on the corner. I had mentioned that uh, we need to cut these seven inches. This one here is seven and a half inches. And you can see that little bit that's going to be cut off with a knife later. And now for the last piece. Make sure some of that foil doesn't fold over or get in the way. I know what you're thinking, and no, I, I didn't get any adhesive on my black shirt. And another good reason to wear gloves, because you're going to fight yourself using it to smooth out the adhesive. Now here you're going to get one above and below. Make sure you get it on both panels. Now you can see that adhesive just oozing out from the uh, holes. And we're going to go ahead and push, push it in. And spread it around. And now the last corner. Again, make it seven inches. Doesn't need to have any overhang on it. And now the last 40 inch rail.
This will really firm up the sides. In fact, it'll never come off, really. You'll have more problems with the uh, tape barn doors coming off, but uh, you can glue those on. We'll look at that later. Now it's time to glue the sockets onto the foil. We're going to do this by marking the center holes in our socket panel. Go ahead and peel off as much of the uh, tags on there as you can before you put the adhesive on. And they should stick to the foil because there's so much foil on the foam. Be sure to pre-drill your holes before you glue the metal brackets on. I drilled a quarter inch hole for the bolts and a half inch hole for the light switch. Once you get a grip and get the nut onto the bolt, you can go back with a pair of long nose pliers and get down into the styrofoam to really tighten it up. This light switch has a bolt that sticks out with a nut that's put on to keep it in place. When putting the U-shaped clamp on, make sure you put nuts on all the way up and if you have to, put washers underneath the nut so you can really tighten it down onto the metal. I use the flat piece of the U-shaped bolt to push down on the foam and compress it in order to get to the uh, bolts to put the nuts on. Once you get the nuts started, you can go back with a pair of pliers and really tighten them up. A socket would be better though. And now you're going to finish putting the nuts on the inside, just like you did before. Here you're going to need an electrical conduit connector for the AC cord. I bought a special sharp three-quarter inch drill to be able to cut a nice hole for things like this. And I use it for different things. Now you definitely have to dig out some of the foam in order to get to the conduit connector and screw it on. Your AC cord will go through the connector. After stripping off the black insulation, you have to strip down the individual wires. Black will be your hot, white will be your return, and green will be your ground, which you're going to wire to that metal bracket glued to the case. Now I'm drilling out the uh, boat in which the ground cable will be attached to. I use two nuts, one to tighten it to the case and another one which will have the ground wire wrapped around it. Okay, now it's time to start stripping our black wires. And there's a whole lot of wires to strip. Your fingers will probably be a little sore after doing all these wires. And then you want to do a bunch of white wires the same way, same length. And now to strip all the white wires.
Now to attach the wires to the sockets. White wires go onto the silver or neutral, and the black wires will go onto the gold or hot. Sometimes it helps to take some long nose and kind of squeeze it, make them tight. To get them inside the black sockets, there's a little tab that you can push down and the wires will feed through there. Then it's just a matter of pulling them tight until the base catches onto the screws. I had put some special screws in there. They're actually um, deck screws. They hold a lot better. Screws that came with the uh, plastic uh, sockets just stripped out. Okay, now all the sockets are together. And we're gonna get a white jumper wire that's gonna connect the first four sockets. We're gonna take four wires from the sockets, all white, and attach jumper wire to them. We're gonna put a wire nut on there that's gonna hold five wires. Pull on each wire to make sure that none of them pull out. Now the second set of four with the jumper wire. Again, make sure you pull on them. They shouldn't pull out. It helps to snip off the top of the wires a little bit. If they're too long, the wire nuts won't go on very good. Okay, that's the ground wire attached to the case. Now the ground wire is attached to the green wire of the AC cord. The hot wire is going to go to the switch. So we simply got a jumper off the uh, AC cord. It goes to the other side of the switch. And we get another jumper wire and we wire all the blacks on the first set. So there'll be five total. Again, make sure you pull on the wires after you put the wire nut on. You could even put some black tape just in case one should pull out. Tape might help it keep it insulated. Now the wires for the second set. We have two black jumper wires. There's one from the first set and the second from the second set and they're going to be tied to the switch. So now you have a complete circuit. Hot going to the switch, it goes to the lights and the neutral return goes back to the white wires. And if all is correct, then they should light. It would be a good check to do here. The last part is applying tape to the barn doors. Now you see here I'm, I'm applying tape to the foil. That foil should be cut out first and the tape should go onto the foam. Otherwise the foil will pull loose a little bit. And here you could also put some Loctite on the tape and really just glue it to the foam. That's probably the best way. Just You can actually even pull the white tape off and reposition it. There I pulled some off and I'm going to 
position it so that it's extremely tight. No gaps. And the two should meet perfectly. Now the top and the bottom. This is why we made the top and bottom panels a little bit higher at seven and a half inches because they will actually fold down on top of the other two barn doors. And the last barn door. These are a little bit hard to kind of get in now that the other two barn doors are in the way. But if you just kind of slide it in there, it'll work. You could even get some uh, cloth, like grip cloth from Joanne Fabrics, or maybe a shower curtain that's sort of frosty to kind of diffuse the light coming out of these uh, softbox. And when it's all finished and on a C-stand, this is how it'll look. And it only took, if you work as fast as I did, 25 minutes for this tutorial.